What is going on, Internet? My name is Lou, and you guys are watching Super User TV. Internet, it's good to see you. Uh, once again, my name is Lou. For all of you uh, that don't know who I am, I'm a developer here on Roots Wiki. Uh, I also have my own YouTube channel, youtube.com slash oh hey it's Lou, where I've got all sorts of Linux and Android related content and a couple other little things over there to help you guys out uh, with tips, tricks, customizations, that sort of thing. Uh, but this is going to be something special. I want to thank Roots Wiki for asking me to be a part of Super User TV. Uh, really excited. I'm going to be bringing you guys a segment called Developer's Corner. Okay, now Developer's Corner basically is going to be a time where I get to share with you guys all of the tips and tricks in Android development I've learned over the last three plus years um, in putting together my own custom ROMs and kernels and themes and and hacks and etc. You know this information again I've acquired over countless hours of personal research, reading books, scouring the internet and just trial and error, school of hard knocks. And I'm going to be showing you guys uh, all this stuff that I've all this knowledge that I've acquired and hopefully you guys will be able to start customizing your phone yourself. Now it's great to be able to come to these forums and um, partake of all this free content that we developers put out there for the community. You guys are able to install our ROMs and our kernels and our mods and our themes. But has there ever been a time where you said, man, I just wish this little thing was different about this ROM or I wish I could tr tweak this just a little bit? Well, I'm hoping that through Developer's Corner, you guys are going to be able to gain some of this knowledge to start digging in and rolling up your sleeves and being able to really make your phone your own. Okay, so today we're going to be taking a look at one file, one little file. And within this file, you're going to be able to add speed to your ROM as well as a custom feature in your ROM and you know you could modify this file to your heart's content and do a lot of things okay so I want to show you guys just how easy it can be to accomplish uh, some of these tips and tricks now um, there's going to be some more advanced things down the road a lot of this stuff isn't going to be learned overnight that's why we're going to have many segments and cover a lot of different topics um, after this particular show will you be able to customize an entire ROM no we're going to be covering segments and different topics on different weeks. Okay, so this is going to be an ongoing learning experience, I hope. Um, but by the end, you guys will have a much better knowledge of the Android internals as well as how to modify them to make your phone your own. And in, you know, in by doing this, it may inspire you to make your own custom ROM or kernel and share them here on Roots Wiki so that other people can partake of uh, the quality work and the hours that you put in uh, to make this um, final product that you're really pleased with and that you may think others would be pleased with as well. Okay, so that's what Developer's Corner is all about. Um, I've been in Android again for three, over three years. I've produced content for the HTC Incredible, for the HTC Thunderbolt, and now for the Samsung Galaxy Nexus. You can find my project. It's called Redemption ROM. It lives right here on Roots Wiki in the uh, Galaxy Nexus, the CDMA version, right in the thread. One of the things that I think I do differently here is uh, I do my video change logs and uh, I make a really clean AOSP uh, ROM <clears throat> that basically the niche to my ROM is has all under the hood enhancements and provides a really clean, fast, stable uh, AOSP purist experience. Now that brings me to my next point. As we're learning these customizations, <clears throat> excuse me, it's my hope that <clears throat> you guys learn a lot of these things and produce a lot of original content. I think one of the things that the Android community is really lacking is <clears throat> when a new project comes out, it really needs to have a vision. It needs to have its own niche. Okay, Make sure if you're going to create content and release it to the community that you guys are doing something different, something that's not being done already, something that's adding to the community instead of duplicating an effort you know when I produce something I feel good about it because almost the entire project 
is my creation. Now, <clears throat> it's not borrowing from other people. It's not, you know, just duplicating features that already exist, but I'm adding something unique to the community. And I, it's my hopes that as you acquire this knowledge through Developer's Corner and your own personal study that um, you guys will be able to create your own unique content. Uh, you'll have a vision for your project. You'll execute on that vision and you'll bring something new to the community that will benefit everyone. Okay, so that's what we're all about. That's a little bit of background on myself and uh, let's get right into it. So again, we're going to be looking at one file today. In this file, <clears throat> there's all sorts of different changes you can make. I'll show you how to make just a couple um, that will really make a huge difference in how fluid your ROM feels, how quick it moves, and it'll also, I'll show you how to add one feature, one simple little feature um, in the same file. Now again, you don't have to be a programmer, okay, to do what we're, we're about to do here in Developer's Corner, okay? Um, a little aside, in case you guys don't know, if you've been in Android any length of time, you've probably be familiar with the term, uh, with the name Cyanogen Mod. Now, Cyanogen Mod, just as the name um, implies, it originally started as a mod on uh, an individual, <coughs> excuse me, a developer by the name of Jesus Freak. Um, Cyanogen himself uh, started modifying Jesus Freak ROMs and putting them out on the internet. Okay, and that's how he got started. For those of you who know anything about Cyanogen, you know that he has no formal programming background. He's obviously a programmer, but has no formal training. You ask him what school he went to, he will tell you the school of hard knocks. So for those of you out there who are not programmers, okay, you don't have any programming background, don't be disheartened because probably the most well-known developer in the whole Android community does not have any formal programming training either. And he produces amazing work. Cyanogen Mod now is its own entity. It's not a mod on any other people's work. Uh, it's a huge project installed on um, hundreds of thousands of devices. And, you know, most projects now borrow um, features or code from uh, Cyanogen Mod uh, to put in their own ROMs. Okay, so it's ironic that it started as a mod and now other people are, are using it as a mod for their work. Okay, so hopefully you guys feel confident that these are things that you can accomplish even though you have no computer programming background whatsoever. Um, and let's get into it. Now, to start, I'm uh, working in Linux, okay? I'm a Linux user. I'm working in a, inside of a, a Linux operating system. Um, you don't have to be in Linux to do this. It is exponentially easier to be in Linux and get this accomplished. Now, if you're on Windows, uh, to the best of my knowledge, without a lot of tweaking and hacking and some custom uh, applications, you cannot compile Android um, in a Linux environment. Now, if you're just modifying a proprietary version of Android, something like Sense or say Moto Blur, there's different mod tools out there that you can use um, to get this accomplished. But as far as compiling Android open source or AOSP code, um, you know you can use a Unix-based system like Mac OS X. Um, or you can use Linux, or of course you can use, say, Windows with uh, a Linux installation inside of a virtual machine. It's going to take much longer to do it that way, however. Okay, so I am within a Linux environment, okay, just to get that out there. So I'm going to be referring to certain applications that live within a Linux environment. Uh, if you want to know more about Linux and Android, you can head over to my YouTube channel. Once again, youtube.com slash oh hey it's Lou, and I've got a lot of different videos over there pertaining to that information. I'm not going to go over that today. We're just going to stick to the topic at hand. So let's get right into it. I'm going to go into my uh, source code file here, or uh, source code directory. This is uh, the latest Android open source um, 4.0.4 code. Okay, now what we're going to look at is a particular config file that controls the animation speeds uh, for a lot of your ROM. Okay, now when the animations in the ROM, those, those fancy little... Uh, Animations that happen when you're uh, swiping through screens or entering or exiting an application, they're all well and good, and they're pretty and they're nice, and everyone likes to look at them and ooh and ah over them. But they can really slow down a ROM if they're not spe if they're not running at the right speed. And for me, I'm the type of person that I can be extremely impatient. I want things when I'm on my computer, when I'm on my phone, I want them to be quick and fluid and fast. I don't want to have to sit there and wait and look for a pretty animation. I want it to the the window. Uh, or to flip through the screen and have it just go as soon as I as soon as I interact with my device I want it to happen so if you're that way and you want to add some speed to your custom ROM this is how you'll do it 
Okay, so if you're within the source code here, we're going to go into our frameworks directory. We're going to go into base. Then we're going to go over here to core, res, res. And here we are, okay? This is where our file is going to live. Now, you'll see a directory called ANIM. These are all your different animations. Now, if you want to do this manually, you can change the speed um, in every one of these files, okay? That'll get the job done. Or what you could do is if you come back out here, we're going to go to a directory called values. <coughs> Excuse me. As you can see, there's a lot of different directories in here with the values title. Um, we want the one that just says straight up values. All right, <clears throat> so go inside values. Here's all these files right here. <clears throat> the one we're going to want is this one right here entitled config.xml. All right, this is a basic framework config file. Within this file, you'll see there's a lot of information. Some of it's very self explanatory. Again, it's just a config file, so there's like, there's really no you're not going to see a lot of Java in here or anything like that. Again, not don't need to be a programmer to understand what we're about to look at. I'm going to open this with um, a basic text editor here in Linux called gedit. If you double click on it, it's going to ask you if you want it to run in terminal or you want to display. You're going to hit display. Okay, so here we go. Here is the uh, config file. Uh, if you're watching this um, in you know uh, the standard screen size. You'll be able to read this a lot better. Uh, this video will be in high definition, so 1080p, 1920 by 1080. By all means, bring it up full screen. You can read all this better. But uh, everything here is in pretty simple language. As you can see here, um, here's a lot of your animation speeds. It's explained uh, right here. It says the duration, which is in milliseconds, um, of the short animation time, medium, <coughs> excuse me, medium length animation time and long animation time. Now, these are not the default values. In fact, they're much higher than this. I've modified um, all of these transition speeds, okay, simply by right here, you see this number, all right? All you've got to do, if I wanted to change this, say to 100, again, it's in milliseconds, uh, that will change the amount of time that the short animation speed will operate at. All right. So anything within the system that has a short animation speed will now operate at 100 milliseconds. Okay, 100 is far too high for Lou. Again, um, I want something very quick. Now, <clears throat> if logically you'll find that if you're modifying your um, your file, you know, short animation time will be will obviously um, conduct itself in the least amount of time. Then medium also getting, you know, it's going to take a little bit longer. And, you know, obviously long animation time will be the longest. Um, you can change these values to whatever you want. I changed them all to 50, which is pretty quick. Uh, but again, if you want to speed up that ROM, um, the faster you set these animations to, the, the, le the less amount of, uh, least amount of time it's going to take for those animations to occur. And it's going to give you a much faster experience. So that's that. Um, you can change all of those times to anything you'd like. Um, Another example here, the duration in milliseconds of the activity when you open and close and fragment open and close animations. I also modified that time there. I set mine to 50 uh, for uh, this value here and then 100. Um, <clears throat> now, again, there's all sorts of settings in here um, that you can change to change how your ROM re uh, you know, basically behaves. I'll show you guys how to add a feature. Um, if you hit Control F on your keyboard, it's going to bring up a little uh, little search box, and we're going to simply type the word um, rotation. Or I'll start to type it anyway. And as you can see here, um, this particular section of the config file, where it says, "If true, the screen can be rotated via the accelerometer in all four rotations as the default behavior." This is the default value, as you can see right here, is actually false. I've changed this to true. What does this mean? Well, basically it means that when you're within an application, not on your home screen, but within an application, say for instance, we'll use uh, Google Music, the music application. When I go to the gym, I use my phone, my Galaxy Nexus, to listen to music. Now, oftentimes I keep my phone in my left pocket. 
Okay, so for me, um, I when I pick the phone up, it's easier for me with my left hand to hold the phone and navigate through the music with my thumb and be able to adjust the volume with my index finger or my ring finger. Well, I'm able to do this if the phone is upside down. Now by default, you're not able to flip the phone upside down and have the application turn right side up. So that, you know, now this way, you know, again, I can configure the hardware buttons in the orientation that's most comfortable for me and obviously most practical for what I'm trying to do. So by enabling this feature, I can actually turn the phone completely upside down. My Google Music application will flip orientation to right side up. I can now hold the phone with my left hand, scroll through the music with my thumb, and control the volume with my index and my ring finger. This is extremely practical to me, and it, it's you know a real-life situation where this feature comes in handy. Did that really involve a lot of coding? Did that involve um, all sorts of Java trickery? No, it didn't. All we're doing is simply changing the word false to true. We sped up our animations by simply changing the number that we found here from whatever the default value is. Essentially, we could cut it in half or change it to anything we want. In my case, I changed everything here to 50. So we just sped up our animations, and we've allowed 360-degree rotation within our applications um, on the Galaxy Nexus. And this also you know, would translate over to even any other proprietary uh, version of Android you're using. If you go into the same location, uh, that framework directory, okay, we can, uh, we're not going to save. Go into your framework, um, you know, again, base, core, res, res, values. Look for your config file. You'll all have one, regardless of what version of Android you're running. And change those config, fee uh, those config settings to whatever it is you'd like. Guys, I, hopefully this was helpful to you. Hopefully, when you now that you've seen how easy it is to add useful um, tweaks that you can use in real life scenarios, um, you feel confident that making custom ROMs and mods and features is something that is attainable even if you're not a programmer. Well, guys, hopefully you like this first episode of Developer's Corner. We're going to get more in depth as the episodes go along. I'm going to show you guys more tips and tricks. So be sure to stay tuned for the next episode of Super User TV. Take care, guys. We'll see you later.